you know, everything is connected. It's all a series of systems and the rocks are one part of it, but it's everything from the microbes to the atmosphere that it's all tied in together and it all is affected by climate change. Right. Thank you. Because that's exactly where we were going. That video, that campaign ad, which is awesome, by the way, uh, I'm talking about the fire, right? And, and the devastation that happened in California, your district, which is, I'm going to show a map of it in a minute here, but it's really right. a desert part of California. And, and But it was it was experienced, uh, the Rye Fire, and then you mentioned a fire that was last year. We've seen an increase in the fire season. What is that like in California? Now. Well, I will tell you, um, we are kind of on edge anytime the wind kicks up around here because California came out of five years of drought and right. um, everything was really, really dry. Then last January, we got a ton of rain and uh, and it was everything bloomed. And so, of course, that meant there was a lot more vegetation to burn if something were to ignite. And we have these Santa Ana winds here, which blow and they are hot and they are dry and they're strong. And it was the perfect kind of conditions for that. And I am somebody, I, I do animal rescue uh, and I've worked with horses awesome. for like 27 years. I don't even know now, it's been forever. <laughs> wow. And, uh, since I was eight, so I guess that's 28 years now. That's and awesome. um, yeah, and so I've helped evacuate horses and wild animals during the last couple of fires that have gone around. And so, I mean, when you're trying to get large prey animals into confined spaces to get them away from a fire when there's soot falling everywhere and you can smell the smoke and you're choking on it, you know exactly how important it is to make sure that we're ready for climate change. I mean, that's just one component of it. it it's not caused by climate change. I get that all the time. A lot of people will say, oh, you know, climate change doesn't cause these fires. No, it doesn't. But it makes them worse and it makes them more frequent. And that's what we have to worry about. A absolutely. That's and, and, and I'm glad you said that. We're, I think we're learning. Um, I'm, I'm showing a slide here of your plan versus their plan, which is basically the opposite of everything there. Uh, and, and you mentioned the Paris Climate Agreement. But uh, I think if there's one we're going to talk about that in a second. But there's, if there's one thing I think Americans are starting to grow up on is that global warming doesn't just mean warm planet, that we're dealing with extreme weather and that climate change has cause this extreme weather or exacerbates extreme weather, correct? Right. And, you know, global warming is kind of a misnomer uh, yes. because, yes, the average temperature is ticking upwards. But, you know, really what we see is like, here's a good example uh, with Antarctica or not Antarctica, sorry, the Arctic uh, getting warmer. You actually see that there's less of an ability to, for those polar cold winds to be kept up there in the right. Arctic region. And so they're sweeping down and that's what's hammering the East Coast right now uh, is winds from the polar vortex. And, you know, that's because one part of the climate is warming and it affects the rest. And we're going to keep seeing those chain reactions. It's like I said, it's a big system. Right. And we don't we don't really know what all, I mean, this wasn't predicted, this massive meeting of, of the, the Atlantic being 78 degrees and an, and an Arctic polar vortex coming down. I mean, nobody knew that was going to meet like that. Right. We're Until, still learning. And I mean, they're right. doing a good job. But if we have things like what's happening with Trump wanting to cut the budget for NASA's uh, Earth right. science research, which he did, and then also, cut, you know, threatening to cut the funding for earthquake early warning systems, tsunami warning systems, hurricane warning systems and volcano warning systems we'll basically be flying blind that's right. dangerous yeah yeah i mean not to mention the fact that we're not really doing every, anything that we need to be doing to sequester carbon to try to reduce global warming and i want to go to california specifically on that your your opponent uh we're going to talk about his record in, in a minute here uh steve <laughs> knight not king although very similar in their <laughs> yes. their their voting record uh i want to talk about jerry brown in california because he comes across as an environmental governor and, and a lot of people, yay, Jerry Brown. He's fracking the hell out of California. What do you, what do you think of that policy? What do you think of fracking? So fracking was an interesting one to me because, you know, as a scientist, I want to wait until I see facts and data and evidence. So when I first heard about fracking, you know, 15 plus years ago, I said, well, you know, I'm not sure. It sounds like it could be problematic, but I'm not sure. So, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, I started to read what I could find about it. And then when the first big study about it came out, I believe it was out of Yale. Um, I read it and went, oh, yeah, OK, like they're saying we need additional data, but it looks like the fracking is having an effect not only on local water supply, but also on earthquakes. And, you know, I'm I started out wanting to be a tectonicist like I wanted to do plate tectonics. So earthquakes and subduction zones and stuff that smashes into other stuff. And, uh, you know, we have that here in California. 
And that right. actually is one of the reasons why fracking is so hazardous and we should definitely not have it in California. I mean, we see what it's doing in Oklahoma and they're right. getting earthquakes out there. And right. there are ancient faults that we don't even know about still, even here in California. And we there are tons of active faults. And just so everybody watching at home knows, um, the, for purposes of building codes in California, active is basically a fault that is ruptured within the last 10,000 years. So wow. if something ruptured within 15,000 years, we might not be calling it active, but it's still there. And uh, I mean, we're littered with faults. We are stupid with faults here in California. And uh, we always say geologists love our faults. Uh, we do, uh, but you know, it's, uh, it's really dangerous and we shouldn't be fracking here. We have other <laughs> effective ways of energy generation and fracking is not the answer. No, it's not. I mean, and you don't you don't need to be a, a scientist of any caliber to know that. I mean, you yeah. got two plates rubbing against each other right there. Mm -hmm. That's drilling holes bad. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I mean, there's there's faults all over the place. Like if you yeah. um, Griffith Park is one of the big parks here in, in yeah. Metro L.A. And if you go to Griffith Park, you can stand on one part of a trail and see three different faults just oh, from right. one viewpoint. And. You know, and actually, you know, the, the big uh, the big leak in the um, natural gas storage facility, Aliso Canyon, that yeah. happened a couple years back, um, that released so much methane into the atmosphere. That whole storage facility is actually underlain by the Santa Susana Fault, uh, which has the potential to rupture at magnitude eight. Uh, so the hundred plus wells there that are, you know, sealing off the natural gas storage, those those are old. I mean, they're all 50 plus years old. So you're looking at something that is really, really delicately contained and it's in an area with a ton of people and it makes people sick. It's, it's just not something we need and we can do, we can do better and we can do it smarter.